The home she was dropped off at was Eric Glides. Ashley now says she was at Glides for a Christmas gathering. Very recently, I was able to talk to Glide and ask him about this. You may start the conversation now. How are you? The night that Brit that Ashley comes over to your place and then JJ and Eric take off. Yeah. Ashley's car gets pulled over. It's like over. two weeks later, right? It's the night of December 23rd. Brittany went missing November 30th. Like a little over three weeks later. All right, so two, three weeks. Yeah. That night that Ashley yeah, goes right. down yeah. to meet with JJ and Eric and the police officer when she gets arrested, she was claiming to go over to your guys' place because she was invited over for Christmas or something like that? Well, she wanted some dope. She's trying to act like where she was coming from. I did not want some dope because I already had dope. I already went and got mine, like from my guy. On that night was as if it, there was some sort of some sort of Christmas gathering that you guys invited her over to because you guys felt bad for her. Uh, <laughs> I don't celebrate Christmas, dude. Okay. I'm like Jewish when it comes to it. So that's you understand all. What that's I'm all yeah, yeah, that's all bullshit. What she's talking about? Yeah, that's total bullshit. <laughs> Why would she get dropped off? You know what I'm saying? Know. I don't Why know, would man. I, get I, off? I don't know. Because I had originally planned on going over there myself. And when I picked Eric up from the search that day, that afternoon, he had a friend with him. That's when I met JJ Fox. JJ Fox wanted to use my car to go to Three Rivers to take care of some shit. But I didn't know the dude, so how about not? Instead, I had Eric, because Eric wasn't doing anything. Eric took JJ to do his shit. So I told Glide I was going to get dropped off. He didn't want the traffic at his fucking house. So he said to me at the shell station by his apartment. So we stopped there and I was cleaning my car out. And that's when I found, and this is how I know it's a setup. I found a loaded uh, pipe, a torch, and his used rig from when he used the car to go see Mystique. So when the boys dropped me off, I took those inside and I gave it back to him. That's why the search was so centered around my driver's seat. And that's why he was so goddamn upset. So upset. He said my car had been searched. Eric S. seems to struggle a bit when attempting to get his story straight when responding to the questions from Officer 1. JJ takes the lead and offers information to the officer, telling him they've been out in the damn woods all day. Eric confirms and says they've been looking for his wife out in the woods and continues on to tell the officer that the vehicle he's driving, a black Ford SUV, belongs to his girlfriend. Yeah, he had it's to apparent. think about that, though. He did. He thought about yeah, it. Yeah, he had to think about what his story was going to be, why he has the car that doesn't I'm, belong to him. I'm driving my girlfriend's car looking for my ex-wife, or my wife. That this statement strikes the officer as odd. Well, no shit. Now, certainly, odd behavior doesn't make you guilty of committing a crime. Unless you're but having a mobile phone that belongs to your missing wife and the vehicle you're driving that belongs to your girlfriend, who happens to be your missing wife's dealer, that's sus in my book. Everything I do is By the way, Ashley, thanks for confirming that the phone was Brittany's. No problem. I've never denied it. We're curious to know where that mobile phone is at today. Probably where all my other shit is that's been stolen. Now that we've recapped, you have it, you've got let's dive into today's here. episode. Let's visit our old friend, the suspect board. Sarah and I have worked on a lot over the past couple months. We've added information and we've been able to remove a few people. It's common practice in investigations to start with the inner circle. This means looking at the people closest to the victim and working your way out. We've concentrated on Brittany's inner circle and we've ventured outward. Eric S. is someone in Brittany's inner circle. 
JJ Fox and Ashley recall Eric introducing him into their inner circle on December 23rd, 2018, prior to the traffic stop you all heard last week. According to Ashley, this is exactly one month prior to recording Glide. JJ. JJ is someone who's been on the sidelines of the suspect board for a while. So let me introduce you to my relationship with JJ. My relationship with him begins with me reaching out to his mother, who happens to be a very good friend to Jessica, Brittany's mother. At the time, JJ was in prison, so reaching him directly was out of the question. After getting some information from Brenda, JJ's stepmom, I reached out to JJ via JPay in September of 2021. And for those wondering what JPay is, JPay is a private company that provides services and products for prisoners. I introduce myself and explain who I am and why I'm contacting him. Several days pass and it's now October. I get a response from JJ asking for my number. I send it and wait. Days pass and there's no call. I send him another email asking if he knew when he might be able to jump on a call. He responds telling me he doesn't have a clue. He reminds me he's in prison and tells me talking to me could get him hurt. And he's still on the fence about making contact. More waiting while days pass. It's now November 2021. And the anniversary of Britney's disappearance creeps up on us. On November 29th, JJ calls. Over the next two days, he calls a total of four times. JJ provides a lot of useful information. It seems like he has a decent handle on the people who are around him. We'll let you listen for yourself. Facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using GTL. What's up, man? First episode you've heard, isn't it? Not much, not much. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm a little buzzed right now, but fuck it's the holidays. Damn, I didn't know you had it like that in there. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately. That's what being affiliation does to you. That's why I'm a little worried on talking a little bit, you know. I give you what I know and you tell me what you know, you know. A lot of shit that don't need to be spread out there. That these motherfuckers are some killers. Who? Who is Yeah, I mean, that's... I definitely, man, I, I'm, that's, I'm all here to try to figure out what happened. And... That's why I'm doing this. And so let me start off with just real quick, JJ. Who are you to Brittany? What was your like relationship to her? I was a uh, uh, long distance friend, if that, because she dated my brother. Other than that, I've only kicked it with her shit two or three times, if that. Like was I that? never really had a relationship built up with her, so. I messaged your brother and, um. Zach? Bauman, right? Bauman? Yeah. So I saw Zach and Britt had been talking up until the point, basically the days before, day, day before she went missing. They were talking before she even went to prison. She was taking care of him and everything when he was in prison. And you're only connected to Brittany through because of Zach. That's your only. Okay. Yep. When yep. you said you got you guys hung out like once or twice, would you recall when those? Yeah, like when she lived in uh, Charlotte Park down in Indiana. Uh, how I think it was, I was there one time, and that was before my brother went to prison. I seen her one time after that. After my brother went to prison, that was in Three Rivers at the Shell Mart near the probation center. I seen her at like 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm out running around the streets high as fuck trying to steal something. What's that? So maybe he's the reason she got raided. She always thought it was because of Zach. And she showed up there and seen me and yelled at me and asked her how my brother was doing. And I was asking the last time I seen her. What year was that? 
fuck. I, I couldn't. And my brother was in prison when that when that. So it was right right before or right the same time that he went just to prison a couple months after. Your brother, when he was in prison, you saw her this one. This was the last time you saw her. Do you remember where where this was at specifically? What city? Yeah, it was in Three Rivers. Is the last I saw her. That was shit. Oh, fuck, man. I, I, timeline is just fucked up because I've been high for so fucking long. But it was year year and a half before she went missing. A year and a half before she went missing? Yeah, if that, like that, like I said, time, I don't know. She was okay. talking about my brother, this and that. She was, I remember she was buying some donuts. <laughs> I know her mom came to me one day and said, your, your brother told me to get a hold of you because you'd be the best man to find out what happened to my daughter. And I went on a hunt. Got so deep in some shit that it had me so fucking paranoid that I was looking over. Was involved in her disappearance. Or in Eric Shank. So they're twenty four seven. Stealing every fucking car I could get because I ain't got nowhere to lay my head. Constantly waking up wondering who's coming after me. This and that. Everybody, you're a Honestly, me searching for her. Reason why I'm in here today. Why is that? Stealing cars is why you're in there, or we're in there. I just kept getting myself self in too much dirt, trying to figure out where where the hell her daughter was at. You stole the wrong car. Let me let me back up real quick, JJ. So you so Jessica reached out to you because Zach told her that I, she should yeah. reach out to you because you could possibly help with figuring out what happened. Now, Zach must have told Jessica this while he was in prison? Yeah, I guess. I, I believe that's what And had you had known Jessica, had you ever interacted with her before her daughter went missing? No, never. Really? Your mom's her best friend. She that's reaches out to you and says, I want to, you know, I need help with you know, your brother, Zach, told me to reach out to you. Zach, your brother hit me up and told me the best bet for me to find my daughter is to hit you up. Maybe you can help me find her as fast as possible. And I said, all right, I'll see what I can do. I took off out the door. Got my nose in some shit that's fucking crazy. Let's talk about it. I mean, let's continue to work through it, but trying to understand just the motive on your side on why you're wanting to help out and assist. Is that because brothers asked this of you, or is this because someone, you know, my mom who I came to right you? Thing. The huh? mother, mother disappeared from her kids. I think a mom should be with her kids. I come from me being in the crime industry, being affiliated and all that shit. We have laws. And my number one law is no, no women, no children, no elderly get involved in any crime. What am I, JJ? Pitch. I believe I'm a woman. Hmm. No woman ever should be suffered for what us fucking idiots in the gang I does. Please explain that. A lot that of motherfuckers don't stand on that code. Car. A lot of like a lot of people I know do not stand on that code. Me, I was Neither raised. Do don't put your fucking hand on a woman. I've gotten arguments with a few motherfuckers. Even one of my own, my own homeboys, my own. My own bro bros is well was my own bro. He put his hands on my baby mama was Kimberly Stem, and he jumped the law and literally pretty much. Motherfuckers just don't care about it anymore. They don't including respect you, it. They don't, JJ, including you. That's where everything fucked up. That's where they all think the sex trafficking and just all that shit's fucking involved in everything. When honestly, I don't think it was sex trafficking. Okay. And so you, so you, so you, you don't think it was sex trafficking from your own investigation, in your opinion? Yeah. I think what happened was Brittany, because I had one of the St. Joe County Sheriff's, or one of the police there in St. Joe, I asked him one day out in the parking lot, give me some info on what he knew. I think I said that, but he gave me some info, and he told me that. They knew she was in the apartment in White Pigeon. In, uh, I don't remember, Bristol Arms or some shit, whatever the fucking name it was of it. Like he doesn't know. The weird thing is, that's where Brittany is in Amanda. 
too much data. So I put the puzzle together and I kind of figured out that she overdosed. That's where I picked him up from. And they tried covering it up and taking her out the fucking, off of Fawn River to uh, Don Hill's house. Gee, James, I hope you had some police follow where up on that Where the house got on fire. And then I believe they tried covering it up. The house fire and it didn't work like they planned, so they burned her even more. And I hate to say that because, you know, this, this member and all that, she pretty much in my eyes, she would be dead, but I hate to even look at it like that. Let's back up to, to the, 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 the beginning of the theory real quick, just so I want to make sure I understand it very clearly. You mentioned two people. Did I hear that right? Yep. That's the apartment that they were staying at. That's, that's the apartment. Amanda's the mom and Brittany's the daughter. Brittany's sitting in the Grange County Jail right now. Amanda's down in Arkansas. And Don Hill is in... Wyoming. Like I told my mom, I got me and a couple boys that are ready to come home and do some vigilante shit. But we're not really trying to come at them like that. The courts can do what they want, but the courts ain't gonna do it. The courts ain't gonna bring justice. Now walk me through that, and let's just go step by step real quick. So you, Amanda and Brittany are sharing I, 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 I believe that she overdosed in that apartment. So, from the scene, though, how does Brittany get to Amanda and Brittany's residence from the that, vehicle? That's the part I don't know. How is she going to crash? That's the okay. part I've been chasing. Brittany and sat down one night. And I was in a stolen car, and we're sitting out on the side of the road. And Brittany come out to me one day. I threw cell phones out the window and everything. I asked her, the fuck do you know? And she told me that her... and went out to a fucking farm. And they said they seen Brittany sitting in the east trough all stabbed up. Hold on, I'll go, I, I need to be able to follow up on these people, so I need to know how to who they are and how to spell their names real quick. This story, I- I told the motherfucker that would know everything is Mandy. <laughs> I was told she knows everything and anything about it. Who, who kind of gave you this information that Mandy is the is the person of source? She has all the information. Someone in here. At Brittany and Amanda's house, she overdoses. What do they do with her body? I'll be heading back out there soon. So I'll try to arrange a time. Like January? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll right put you on my business list. Uh, you got a chance to swing in here? I will. If shit ain't, if shit ain't all closed up on this and everything, when I come home, we can sit down and go over every bit of it. Yeah. Even if it's all closed okay, so up, I'm still gonna, over you ain't gonna be able to close everything up on everything in there. There's, there's a lot, it's corruption like a motherfucker. Everybody's pointing fingers at everybody and... Well, I want to ask you about that. Like, like, tell me what you know about, I mean, you've heard probably all sorts of theories and, and, and even in your own investigation, come up with your own, even like with this situation, but like still having to put the puzzle together. How did she end up off of the road, knocking on doors, guy sees her, boy sees that's her? That's the part that, that, that's another part that trips me out because I read the police report that was supposedly from- You have one minute remaining. That was supposedly from Michigan State Police and it just didn't add up. The car that they used, 
that they said it was involved in it. I looked at the wreck. I looked at the wreck. I looked at the car. It didn't add up. So when I was kicking with Eric Shank, he introduced me to a girl named Ashley. Well, Ashley was driving a Ford Explorer. The Ford Explorer I took. The Ford Explorer was all beat up and everything. So I took it one night and I ran right down that same road. And I locked the brakes up and slid it straight into the same tree that she did, supposedly. And it all lined up. The tree, the everything, just... And Ashley had all of Brittany's clothes and everything, so that's what she supposedly was moving into. Just knows them. Wrong. I had none of Brit's shit there. Correction. I had her blanket. I had her blanket there, which Eric Shank let me keep. Eric even messages Jessica and says, Hey, I noticed you were telling people that Ashley has Brittany's things. She doesn't. Then I go on to find in Jessica's messages where she states to Madison, Brittany's sister, Oh, I already have all Brittany's things. I got them from Sheldon's. The cops corroborated that too. Why is she saying you have Brittany's things? We were there when she took them. I never had Brittany's things. Jessica did. Well, that. Can you call me back? Um, yeah, I can, but it's gonna be like fucking 20, 30 minutes. Actually, it might be longer than that. We got fucking phone lines. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll I'll be on standby whenever you're ready. Oh, uh, just uh, what time tomorrow? We can do that. Same time tomorrow. Thank you for using GTL. Sometimes this is how things go. You can't always wrap up details on one call from prison. The time an inmate is allotted goes by very quickly. Our call ends abruptly. We hang up. And to my surprise, I get a call right back. Thank you for using GTL. Hello. Hey. Sorry, fucking phone lines are retarded. No, you're good. I sent you an email. I didn't know if you, if uh. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah. Just uh, I thought I thought I heard you say it all same time tomorrow. Yeah, I was gonna, but then I fucking was gonna go in there and email you same shit. But emails is fucking JV lines are retarded too. They're coming up here when January. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna head up there to come back and see if I could talk to a few more people. But I wanted to ask you just about some of the characters who I've been introduced to and who I've talked to and the information I got my stuff from and kind of just see what your thoughts are. All right. Go ahead. So, when did you first come to know Ashley? Um, after Brittany went missing. We were all standing out there on the side of the road searching for her at that time, and then Eric showed up with the dog, and started me and Eric went to the woods looking for anything, if we could find anything, and... Had you had known Eric before, before that? Huh? Had you have known Eric? Had you had known Eric before that? I knew of him. I never, like, the first time I met Brittany was when I was down there in the apart, uh, trailer park. Me and my brother and them were down there, and Eric come through the house then. That was the first time I ever met Eric too. So it was pretty much the second time running into Eric. Okay, and then you get paired up with Eric to go on the search. Who pairs you guys up? Like, who makes that decision? Eric just showed up, and I decided to take him out to myself and to figure out. Pretty much, I paired us up. Okay, so you you intentionally did that? Yeah, in a way. What was the it reason? Just, it just all fell, it all fell in play that he walked with me, and next thing you know, I'm actually picking me and him up off the side of the road. Say that last part one more time. I said, next thing you know, me and Ashley, Ashley's picking me and Eric up off the side of the road. How long? Okay, next so who's know, at? Next thing you know, Eric was out there for hours. I knew nothing about JJ. Eric called or texted, whatever. So they were ready. I was like, well, my dog probably wants to come home and eat, warm up, like come get some lunch or some shit. That's when he said, I have a friend with me. Is that okay? 
sure. And so search with you, and so it's you, Eric. Just me and Eric and the dog. So after Brittany had gone missing, how much time goes by when before you and Eric search together? It's I, I don't I don't know. I know when uh, the search started, my mom and them came and got me. I don't like pigeon. We went over there to search, and then said I was searching for two, three hours until Eric showed up. He's my mom was standing there in the, her boyfriend's truck. We're on. A... He's obviously not got the balls to say publicly where Eric might hear, but he told me that following Eric around was like watching him retrace his steps. Everyone in the search party was over here. Why is this nigga over here in the woods walking around like crazy man? Da 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 da. Bah. JJ said it was like watching Eric retrace his steps. In the river when uh, Eric come walking up on us. So you and Eric went on this search. Now was this a part? Was this just the two of you who designed the search, or were you guys going to a search that other people had put on? Uh, we were just searching the area that. I've already searched part of it, so I decided when Eric came walking up to finish searching the other rest of the area, like more of the area. Where is this area? And Eric just decided to go, yeah, like down the wreck, down from where they said the wreck was at. We were all the way from the wreck. Like I searched, shit, three, four miles of that whole area for anything. I had mud all the way up to my hips from walking through the fields. Nobody else is there searching? No, no one, just me and Okay, and how did you and Eric design this search and search party? Like, who came up with the idea? Who, you know, how did he get there? Because Grandma took you, you said, right? I don't know. We or were I'm not Grandma, mom, but your mom. Jess, all of us were out there searching to begin with, and then Eric just pops up. Eric yeah. just took off walking, searching for more. That's what and I was he thinking. He just stuck to my side. Jess, right. there was also, like, other people. Jessica was there on the search as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a whole search party that day, but Eric just popped up and he just seemed to be stuck on my side that day. So Eric's there, and then eventually you and Eric are walking, doing your, doing the search. And this yeah. is all over by where the car had gotten abandoned? Uh, should call it a mile away from there. I was uh, searching the river, that, the closest river that was close to there, I was searching up and down it. Do you and Eric talk about it at all while you're there? Does he? Do you guys mention anything? anything I, I asked if he knew what the fuck was going on, and he he just he tried playing victim. Like he he didn't know shit was going on. Him and her were arguing this and that. Eric was a little weird after all, like that search and shit. And then I, see, I was homeless at the time. And then when I met up with Ashley and him, Ashley told me I could move in with her. And Eric was just, I don't know how to say, he was a fucking pyro. Like, he was on some weird shit. Ashley comes and she picks you guys up. Had Ashley been on the search as well, or was she just driving by and picked she you up? She said she was searching earlier that day. She said she was searching. I don't know where she came from, but she just swooped up and picked yeah, us up. Yeah. Okay, so she said she was searching earlier that day, but she wasn't a part of the party search that Jessica had organized. No. And there was what I was searching earlier that day, ever. What were you doing that day? You had something specific going on CPS that day. Yes, shit. I dropped Eric and my dog off because <coughs> I said something about bringing dogs. We had them, and I went back to my fucking house and did my whatever I needed to do for CPS shit. Yeah, was there then, was a CPS agent there? No. No. I'm bringing calls and shit like. Okay. Homework, whatever. But I went back and got them. And that's when he came to my house. Said he had to take care of a bunch of shit in Three Rivers. Talking about boxes, like metal boxes buried with guns in them and shit. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. She's fucking weird. She messaged, she messaged me the other day off of Brittany's shit. Oh, pause this. I won't deny that. I had access to Brittany's JPay. And I don't know what the hell was going on, but everyone was... I had to get a hold of JJ for some fucking reason. I did not pretend to be her. I messaged... I didn't have any stamps on my JPay. She had like 20, maybe insensitive, whatever. I used one. I got a hold of him, said, if you want to talk to me, 
find a way to get me some money for some stamps because I don't have any. Told him don't freak out, like it's me, not her. And that was that. It is. Where's JP? She did? Recently? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like two weeks ago. What'd she say? Remember, this is 20. Uh, she says, um, uh, I'm sorry this is gonna trip you out, blah, 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 some shit like that. I'm not 100% sure what she said. Something, something about her not having stamps on her JP, but she asked a question. She needs she to talk to me about something that's important. Not for me not to freak the fuck out, but she didn't have no stamps or nothing on hers. I messaged back and said, I don't know what the fuck you're doing on her shit, but do you think this shit's a fucking game? If you want to talk to me, I said, you can send me a fucking number and get on your own JPEG. I called, as soon as I got off that message, I called my mom and let my mom know that, let Justin know that what the fuck was going on. What the fuck? Why would she do that? Because she's, a, she's, <laughs> I think she's involved in a lot of this shit, man. Because okay, I've, I've talked I mean, to her and I've spent hours and hours in conversation fine. with her. I've talked to her for a long time, man. Okay, I just gotta say this. Oh my god. Not too mo- long ago, he just, I'm sure she OD'd in that apartment yeah. and they moved her to Don Hills. Yeah. No, I'm so sure that he's she's involved in, you know, like, like, come on, right? This is what he does. You know, Jade's a storyteller too. And, and I James swear has- I just heard James ejaculate as soon as he said that. Yes, because James has set it up for all these idiots to get off their fuck shit by putting it on to me. They're Mm -hmm. all falling right in line, right along with the narrative. Like, yeah, yeah, let's put it on Ashley, who didn't know anyone or anything. Met with her when I was up there. And I'm I'm still trying to understand something. Either you're a really, really, really devoted and great friend that you want to find what happened, or you're involved. Big big, big, Majesty. She's dug it. Oh, she's yeah, like, involved. it's like she's put herself completely in it. It's so all the information that she has and shit. I told her, I said, look, you need to stop digging. I'm sitting down in Indiana with her and a couple other motherfuckers in the house we're sitting in. Hey, ain't nothing but gangbangers and shit. Motherfuckers are sitting there and strike killers. And she's sitting here trying to gas these motherfuckers for information about shit. I'm like, you can't be asking this information to these motherfuckers. These people will kill you, you dumbass. Sure that She's like, oh, well, I just want to know. What you're trying to do is cover your own. You're trying to make yourself feel good for being involved in some bullshit. Is what I believe is happening. Maybe you just described it. Right. I believe she knew something about it all. It's, I don't know. There's, there's so many fucking stories of he said, she said bullshit, man. And it tore me the fuck. It drove me insane a little bit trying to figure out the puzzle. Did you ever work with her? I mean, she picks you yeah. up. Did you? I imagine when she yeah. picked you and you and Erica. I rode around with Ashley. I rode around with Ashley, or she gave me the keys to her car and let me go out and do my own thing to figure out shit. But the whole time, she had a GPS tracker on her damn car. Pause. There's was, nothing it, wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's, uh, it was a ODB, OBD, whatever. OBD2. Plug-in, so my car was its own Wi-Fi hotspot. Because I had a contract phone, it came with my plan. Like, it was part of my plan. I'm a fucking, I like my techno shit. Like, I like Wi-Fi. So did everyone else that can't afford to have their phone on, JJ, who used my Wi-Fi. It doubled as a GPS tracker, which is great when you have fucks that steal your car. How do you know that? Because she showed me it. She showed me that, like, if I if I didn't close the gas cap on her car, I would get a phone call. That's retarded. Hey, close the gas cap on your car. Are you fucking serious right now? She has everything monitored on that fucking Ford Explorer that she had. But even if I did... The fuck is wrong with that? It's, it's it's wild. The bitch is crazy. <laughs> I hate to talk about a woman like that, but that bitch is crazy. Jess told her one day, said that Eric said they, Jess, you got, or told Ashley, said, I heard you got all my daughter's shit in your basement. She's like, oh no, I don't have none of that. 
She had a lot of shit in that basement of hers. All mine. Ashley did? My kids. Yeah. I think a lot of it was Britney shit. None of it was Britney Because there was kids clothes down there and everything else. Three kids well, well Ashley's got kids. Yeah, but Ashley didn't have none of her kids no more. As huh? of two weeks prior to meeting you. Ashley five. don't have her kids no more. She ain't had them for a long time. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just playing devil's advocate. You can easily for say, a long well, time. yeah, that might be why the clothes are in the basement because she didn't have her kids anymore. Yeah, true. Did you see the the, the clothes in the basement? He stole some of my kids' shit. And yeah, I saw clothes in the basement, basement toys in the basement. It's, there was some of Britney's shit that was down in that basement. Eric was very protective on that basement, though, too. Negative. So Ashley told me that, her, that Eric started hanging out at her house and was basically living there. Yeah, then, and Britney was moving in. To Ashley's apartment. I thought she was moving, but she wasn't she moving in to. with Sheldon? She never did. No, she was moved into Britain or into Ashley's. No, she was going. Uh, she to. moved into Ashley's, I guess, before. Well, I know that she was she at was Sheldon's because that's, that's why she had. That's why she had Sheldon's car. I don't think she had Sheldon's car because the wreck does not like Sheldon's car had just a little crack underneath the front clip. I agree with that. Yeah. There was a mark on that tree that was two foot, two and a half foot high. My Ford. There's no way in hell his car slid down that little little ass ravine and hit that mark in that street. Yeah. Well, here's here's my question: Is <clears throat> if that vehicle that was retrieved and reported and on the report and impound and law enforcement showed up at Sheldon's house that night, I gotta think that that's probably Sheldon, right? I mean, it's gotta be his car because they have it at the impound, they have it on the police report, the VIN number, all that stuff. Yeah. So I think yeah, they also the word is that Brittany ran up down them houses, shaved her head, made herself. Word is that there was another woman that placed to fake the scene of what went down. John Cassart, the old man that she interacted with, he. Yeah. I mean, they asked him, "Is this the girl?" I, you know. My thing is, is, why would she run all the way to that house when there was two houses within? less than a hundred yards of peace that guaranteed someone's not gonna answer them doors because they're both most of them farmhouses sitting there where she wrecked right there's a hundred fifty two hundred thousand dollar houses sitting there with dogs yeah so how did the people not answer the phone or not answer the doors because they were on vacation but she had to go fucking a quarter of a mile away to knock on her house to some 70 80 year old man the family and the houses that that or next to on the right and left of where the cars the car got into the accident as we'll call it yeah um, they were on vacation oh all right what about the other one though same thing it's owned by the same family oh a lot of that property yeah. all one family all right that would explain why we were out there searching no one was running around either she then proceeds down to john cassar's house and then knocks and he actually interacts with her and she actually even gets on the phone with 911 Greg listened and Greg said, like, that's my daughter. Like, I know what she sounds like. That's her. And then when they started, when they asked for his address, she gave the, the phone back to John. And then once they asked John for her name, she dipped. But she had a warrant yeah, for her. Yeah, but she didn't have trouble. She, oh, Brittany was a fuck. You have one minute remaining. Jessica All right. Um, warrant for you're coming up here in January, correct? Yeah, yeah. I got, I got a few more questions. Um, can we try again tomorrow? Yeah, uh, we can do that. Okay, I got same time. Yeah, yeah, same time. All right, I can do that. All right, I appreciate you, Jay. Kiss. All right, yep. Uh, later. Kiss me through the phone. Yeah. Hello. Uh, gotcha. gotcha. I uh. I appreciate you calling back. I wanted to kind of just, like I said, just kind of pick your brain a little bit about just kind of the stuff that I wanted to share. And you kind of talked a little bit about what you had discovered and what you kind of gone through in your own experience and in investigating this and kind of having to look over your shoulder. And... All right. A couple of things yesterday that you had mentioned that I wanted to get confirmation on was you had mentioned Amanda and Brittany and Amanda was Brittany's mom, correct? Correct. And their last name is Correct. So supposedly Brittany had overdosed over at their residence. 
that's that's what I think. What I believe happened. Okay. And they all panicked and fucking freaked out and took her out to fucking Don Hill's house and so on from there. And were you and Don Hill friends? Me? Yeah. Me and Don? Yeah. Hell no. No, fuck no. All these people that are involved with this, I didn't learn. Where's the people that they say are involved with? I ain't friends with none of them. I, I associated with them in the past. I have so many motherfucking enemies out there. Like, I don't fuck with any of them. Fucking turn everybody in. You have been told this story from about Brittany and Amanda and all of this, and then our Brittany overdosing and this happening at, at <laughs> residence from Mandy. Uh, I was told Mandy <laughs> the one that fucking talked to you about everything. She knows everything. That's what I've been told from here and here. You've obviously heard about the white male who was with Brittany at her grandma's house. You've heard yep. about that guy, right? Yep. Do you have any idea who that man is? Uh, I was probably under the assumption that it was a uh, brother. I fucking don't know his name. And That's then, who I was supposed to be fucking around with, but he's all covered in tattoos and shit, so. And who told you that? Uh, actually, who I assumed she was with, because. I don't remember who the fuck told me. Like, there's been so many stories. Like I said, I hate talking about it. I hate hearing about it anymore. That's why I didn't want to call. Go over here about it. Then. For me, my part of what I'm trying to do is just eliminate what's not the truth. You know what I'm saying? You're not. You got a long road ahead of you eliminating the truth, not the truth. Yeah. This is part of it. I'm on that road right now. And I'm going to stay persistent with it, you know? So, this Ashley girl girl. Yeah. Ashley girl. She's the one who recently messaged you from Britney's account from JPay. Yep. And basically your response to her was why the fuck are you on Brit's account for one and right. two like I ain't fucking with you type of thing. Pretty much. Gosh, Eric was, was staying at Ashley's house during the time right. that Britney went missing. Yep. After. There's some things that Ashley's done that I'm just like, I, I question. Every move she's made since I met her, I've questioned. I just stay close to her to fucking find out what the hell the moves were for. You stay close to me to steal my fucking car. Yeah, she's and good. And talk to me again. Well, what's she doing? Covering herself up or whatever the, however the, fuck, whatever the fuck she's doing. You went on that search so with you know Jessica... And you guys eventually ended up going over to Don Hill's house. Yeah. I went over there. I, I was out, and I was staying with Pigeon at the time, so I was out walking around anyways. And I decided to walk out towards Don's house because I, I wasn't friends with Don at the time, but Don was still selling my dope for me. When I went out to Don's, I realized that the house was burned up. No one was around. I kicked over the trash cans that were out there. And Have you ever met any two people that deal with dope that don't know each other? They're all paranoid. They have to have some trust and know of each other to be dealing their dope together and sharing their money, right? Well, right. He did. So he's he, saying he's not, he barely knows him, but he's selling JJ's dope. Right, but I mean, aside from just bullshit, period. Nobody buys dope from JJ or deals with JJ because. No one's dumb enough to walk into a control buy like that. And that's what happens if you deal with JJ and dope. I know, but he just said Don Hill I was know. selling his dope. I know. But he doesn't know Don Hill. Right. You make a valid point there. I'm just saying. Like, aside I'll, from I, that, that. That's my whole point. And I'm making my own. Nobody deals with JJ and dope because no one's <laughs> dumb enough. Except for Don Hill. Uh, apparently. <laughs> well, and there's, there's this weird, it's probably a weird vibe, so I looked around. I found a chloroform bottle laying in a motherfucking trash can. Chlorophyll. That's when I decided to walk back into Pigeon. I called yeah. Justin and them. They came out there. We yeah. searched around, looked yeah. around. The police the showed up. Yeah. Well, before the police showed up, I walked all the way to the back of the woods. And I ended up following some footprints out to the woods. Well, I ended up losing them going across the river. I don't know where the fuck they were, who they were. And then uh, I got back up to the house and the police were there. When did this take place? What year and what month? Fuck. This is right after she disappeared. Like, a month mm -hmm. after that. 
I've been to Don Hill's house, or at least where it used to be, because it's not there anymore. Oh, they, they, they tore that motherfucker down like the fastest I've ever seen a house get tore down it's and exactly build it. That's the fastest I've ever seen it get tore down. Okay, when you went inside Don's house, what did you, of or at least what was left of it? What did, what do you remember? Anything you take away? Uh, the one bedroom being burned up, the bed mattress and all that shit being burned. It was only one bedroom. Yeah, there was only one bedroom burnt. It tower started from the outside, but uh, it was just the one bedroom, and it was mainly the mattress and shit. Downstairs, the whole upstairs. Wall had a hole in it, but no, upstairs, upstairs. So it was on me. I went floor. down in the basement, and we tore the basement. I, I tore the basement the fuck up looking for shit. And I, inside I the house, I found some fake money, and like that. But so yeah. where, where was Don at? Why isn't he home? Don and uh, I guess I guess they took off. I guess Don left state. Before Brittany went missing? Last I heard he's Don in Wyoming right now. It, was that before or after she went missing that Don took off? After. He let his truck go back to repo, which he only owed like twelve hundred or twenty two hundred dollar truck that he's been paying all these years. He let his truck go back to repo and I guess took off. Twenty two hundred dollar truck has been paying. Motherfucker still owes me like nine hundred. Did anybody ever hear why he he left? No, he just left. He took off to Wyoming. That's the last place anybody said they've seen or heard from him. Do you know if he left before or after the fire? I was told it was after the fire. That's why I don't understand why the police ain't went and got him and questioned the shit out of him. Okay, so you guys go inside. This one is all of his personal items still inside the house, or has it just like been abandoned? It's abandoned. Okay, and then you go inside, you flip over stuff. What did you find that you, I mean, was there anything that stuck out to you? There was really nothing that stuck out except the fact that in the basement on the ceiling, there was like, you know, uh, uh, the screw in eye, eye, eye things, like the round eye, eyelids, the whole, whole shit up, like hooks. Uh huh. There was like two or three of them in the ceiling. That's the only thing that fucking stood out to me. That's the only thing that stood out to you, JJ? From some of the story. The, the second step down the basement stairs that was missing the floorboards doesn't stick out to you? Or the mattress in the middle of the floor surrounded by fucking needle caps? Okay. Is this the house that you told me there was a padlock on a deep freezer? I've been told that. You've been told, but you didn't see it? I didn't go back that far. You didn't go down when the I basement saw, No, I went to the basement. Okay. I saw the desk that the money was printed at, and I saw the mattress in the middle of the floor. I wasn't going any further. That basement creeped me the fuck out. Yeah. You said somebody told you there was... Somebody a... told me there was... When you go back past the mattress to the right, there's a deep freezer back there that was... Who said it? I'm going to have to talk. To a couple of people, uh, I think I know who was ordered to go put a padlock on it before it was dozed. Okay. You you suspect that the deep freezer is still on the property, in the bulldozed basement. over in the yep. basement? It's, I've heard, so that's kind of what stands out to me. Is, is I've heard this, they said she was tied up. Why? I've been told a story about finding me? money at this search on, at Don Hill's she's house. Do you know anything about that? Body. Yeah, I found it. Tell me your part of it, or at least your side of it. On, on, on how well, is it even relevant? I matched the picture off the wall, and behind the picture was like six hundred dollars worth of fake printed out twenty dollar bills. Bobby Moore put them back there. Did you know right away it was fake? Yeah. How so? I used to print it with the dude that used to put the fucking stay there. The guy that used to stay there, I used to fucking mess around with. He was he moved out long before all this shit went down. But like, he used to mess around with it back in the day. And they look identical to the bills that we used to have. So, okay, so back to the apartment, looked at them, and tell them they were fake. What'd you do with the money? <laughs> dope dealer. Mm. Some went to the dope dealers. Some went to the fucking. Who knows? Yeah, we'll get him killed. I ain't seen Bobby or talked to him since then, and I don't want to see Bobby because I want to wrap a rope around his fucking throat because I believe he has something to do with my fucking one of my homeboys dying. 
Um, so then you're inside the house, you find that money, and you, have, you see some of the hooks on top of the ceiling in the basement that stood out to you. Right. No, did you, when you looked around, did you see any blood? Did you see any? No, not any, not any. Okay. And in the bedroom that, that, that had the fire, the mattress was burnt up pretty bad? Oh, there, there was just, it was just a metal frame that was left. You said you walked out back. Or actually, you said you had called Jessica before that, and they came, and you're, you're now in the house with them. But then, yeah, I called Jessica and them. Jessica and them showed up. I ended up going back into town. I believe I believe that's how it went. One of the two, either I went back into town. You have one minute remaining. I know I left them for a little bit, and then when I came back, I walked all the way to the back because there was footprints going from the yard line all the way back. And then I lost them there, and then I went back into the woods, and I found them again, and then I ended up losing them through the uh, water. Which is, I don't see how I lost them in the water, because the water was fucking almost six, seven foot deep, so I know no one crossed that motherfucker. It's not frozen at that time of year? No, it wasn't. Yeah, give me a call back before this before this ends. I have just a few more questions, if that's fine with you. All right. All right, thanks. Thank you for using GTL. The fuck you looking at, sissy? <laughs> I quit, but I want to fall. Quit. You can't be talking to me. Of course I am. <laughs> Hello? Let's go back to real quick to the Don Hill house search. You you had mentioned that you originally got, you were gonna go to Don Hill's house before Jessica and them arrived? Yeah. What was a part of that decision making of, I'm gonna head out to Don's and then I'm gonna call Jess? Like, did you get there first and there's- uh, Yeah, I got, I got in the Don's house before anybody even knew what the fuck was going on out there. Well, but what made you think that possibly Don's house could be the place that they did that with Britt and her body. Cause that's what the, the story was, is Don was involved in some shit and I know Brittany was taking, Brittany was taking it out there before with Bobby Moore. I mean, that was like a fucking trap house spot. Okay. So Don Hill, he's, his name continues to get brought up. Look, when I first met Don Hill, I went out there his house. I don't know who the fuck took me out there. Someone took me out there. I had like three ounces of dope on me. He's like, bro, I can sell some dope for you. I'm like, all right. I gave him a bunch of dope, sat there, he sold it for me. And then like two days later, he's all talking about, man, you can find us some bitches, man. I'll pay you some money, man. If you find us a couple of bitches run around the house and just la, 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 la. I'm like, bro, I don't fuck around like that. I said, I sell dope, that's all I do. I said, no women get involved in my shit. His brother come out. I don't know who his brother was, but his brother came out and the, the vibe I got off of those two motherfuckers was the most creepiest vibe I've got in my life. I mean, as far as Jessica's involvement, do you think she has anything to do with this? I thought she did at the beginning. I, you know, it crossed my mind, but I, I, I can't fucking say she did because you know, I kind of like fucked my head up to think that a mom could actually have something to do with some shit like this, but society is fucked up do you what about sheldon ashbrook i've think? known sheldon for a while you know he could but i don't think that motherfucker's got if he, he's got anything to do with it, it's because someone's threatened to kill him if he ever fucking because he was dragged into it and threatened and everything else because i've known it for a while and boy softer than fuck softer than sharpened what about eric shank um what I've seen, what I know to Eric from kicking it with him. Boy, he's got some fucking screws loose, that's for sure. Mm. And he does kick it with the weird motherfuckers. What about Cage? Cage? I never really kicked it around Cage, but like twice. And I don't know, Cage, I don't know. He showed up at Ashley's one day and straight told me, he said, look, we find out who these motherfuckers are. He said, we kill them. I'm like, all right. He took me out in the car, showed me his guns. He said, these bitches are loaded. Other than that, he's never, we never really kicked it or anything. 
how tall are you, JJ? Six three. The guy I know who was there at the house that night, I know he was like five six, five seven. Right. At at a grandma's that night. Five six, five seven. I, that'd be probably brother. He's about that height. Um, there's a few of them that are about that height. That yeah. In a whole same fucking scenario. Here's where it gets confusing for me. She she was at Sheldon's the day that she went missing, and she's there. She's with him. Who? And so now I'm trying to figure out who's her dealer. You who have one minute remaining. I'm trying to figure out who is she buying from. There's so many motherfuckers out there. They, they, <laughs> that's hard telling on that one. Uh, I mean, I asked the boys if they'd recognize any of the guys that I've already mentioned, and, and the only person that they do recognize are a few guys who I've shown them images of, but I'm just trying to understand this, and I know we got probably about maybe 30 to 40 seconds left. Have you ever heard the name Josh? No. Josh what? Josh? No. Does he fit the description? Uh, blonde hair, uh, about five nine, five eleven. The guy said I was eye to eye with him. The boys are five six, and Scott's five six. All right, well, that's a brother. I can't fuck her. Thank you for using GTL. What? My conversations with JJ were eye-opening. I appreciate his candor, and I appreciate him sharing his experiences. I walked away with the thoughts on many of the topics he touched on. JJ said Eric was weird. He called him a pyro, meaning a pyromaniac. Is he implying that Eric likes to start fires? Pause. He told me about his experience with Eric at a might be implying that Eric likes to start fires, but I can prove that JJ does because of the police reports where he admits to setting vehicles on fire and then walks free because, you know, when you're JJ, you can commit arson. <clears throat> and then don't you have some uh, screenshot stuff with Eric being called Matches? <coughs> yeah, Eric said his own nickname as Matches. He kind of like alluded to there's a reason why my nickname is Matches. No, it's, he didn't lose. That's what he said. That's what he said? Okay. Don't call Search the day of the traffic stop. Eric latching onto JJ. JJ described it as Eric S. being stuck on his side the whole day. JJ doesn't mention searching in Three Rivers, though, which is what he tells the Three Rivers officer later that day when they're detained at the traffic stop. Does that mean they didn't search in the Three Rivers area? Not necessarily, but still curious to me. No. JJ describes Eric being protective of... Go ahead, what? No, they weren't searching in the Three Rivers area. They were searching Sturgis. They were going to fucking find my Aztec that night. We're Ashley's basement. We've heard a lot of stories about the basement and different activities happening there. Did Eric know about something going on in the basement? JJ tells me pretty confidently that he believes Ashley is involved with Brittany's disappearance in some way. It was interesting that JJ recounts Cage showing him around, firearms yeah. and pointing out that they're loaded yeah. and says Cage tells him they'll kill whoever did this to Brittany. Would Cage say something like that if he was involved in Brittany's disappearance? After my last phone conversation with JJ while he was in prison, I was looking forward to speaking to him after he got out, both in person and on the phone. He gave me his word that he'll contact me when he's out. He didn't have much time left to serve. So I was eager to see if he's a man of his word. Eventually, a short time later, JJ is released, but he refuses to connect. I continue to try and make contact. In my world, when you say you're going to do something, you fall. He did come and find you after he got out? JJ did, yeah. And what, what transpired there? Why is this motherfucker trying to get a hold of me? What the fuck did you say to him? 
not so much truth. But I already knew James was on bullshit by then, so I told him that he was on bullshit. Yeah. True. JJ sends me voice messages. Do you think we can get JJ to sit down? I won't even try. I don't want to no. see that motherfucker again. As long as I live. Public place and. I have no go desire to, to see that motherfucker because he's got nothing worth nothing to say. He's okay. a fucking liar. He's full of shit, and he just needs to feel big and bad. Boy, for a, for a guy who doesn't want to talk, he sure does a lot of barking. I've told you 20 fucking times, I ain't FaceTiming you, I ain't talking on the phone. When you see me in person, we can talk. Other than that, get the fuck off my shit. I make sure to return the favor and remind him that he's the one in my inbox this time. JJ, you said you had a target on your back now, and that you have to look over your shoulder. That target's yeah, on there. Yeah, well, considering I'm hearing from you while you're in prison... I'm confident looking over your shoulder isn't something new to you. JJ, you're pissed that I played the recording of you, Ashley, and Glide. But you guys recorded Glide behind his back. Okay. Explain how that's not hypocritical. At least you knew your call was being recorded since you called from a penitentiary. Look, I, I chase people shit, who kill other people for a living. When a motherfucker gets a hold of me and says, I'm going to tell you what happened to your friend, but I'm only telling you one motherfucking time, you're straight dumb if you think I'm not going to record that. And that's exactly what I told JJ. When Eric told me he was going to tell me what happened, I said, I'm recording this dude. Judge me if you want. I don't give a shit. I'm recording this dude. And JJ I understand said, what I'm having a target on your back is like. But if that's the case, then let's clear this shit up. Let's stop playing games. And get to it already. You first, James. When you don't keep your word, you lose credibility. I think that's all we have to say. So if you stayed through to here, thank you. Ashley, you want to say goodbye? Bye.